deadly riots over the government's plan to avoid defaulting on its loans. Is that the unemployment keeps rising and it has to keep rising just because you have know, an excess so much supply so of goods, which is this is all borrowed money that our and kids. That debt is owing by banks in other countries. In the form of a convenient personal loan. Filter cigarette that delivers the taste, and I'm 45. More flickers. Are you hot? Quite some time ago, by a section of America is sponsoring. I first learned it from my grandmother. Now, my grandmother was a wonderful person. She taught me how to play the game Monopoly. She understood that the name of the game is to acquire. She would accumulate everything she could, and eventually she became the master of the board. And then she would always say the same thing to me. She'd look at me and she'd say, one day you'll learn to play the game. One summer I played Monopoly almost every day, all day long. And that summer I learned to play the game. I came to understand the only way to win is to make a total commitment to acquisition. I came to understand that money and possessions, that's the way that you keep score. And by the end of that summer, I was more ruthless than my grandmother. I was ready to bend the rules if I had to to win that game. And I sat down with her to play that fall. I took everything she had. I watched her give her last dollar and quit in utter defeat. And then she had one more thing to teach me. Then she said, now it all goes back in the box. All those houses and hotels, all the railroads and utility companies, all that property and all that wonderful money, now it all goes back in the box. None of it was really yours. You got all heated up about it for a while. But it was around a long time before you sat down at the board. And it will be here after you're gone. Players come and players go. Houses and cars, titles and clothes, even your body. Because the fact is that everything I clutch and consume and hoard is going to go back in the box and I'm going to lose it all. You have to ask yourself, when you finally get the ultimate promotion, when you've made the ultimate purchase, when you buy the ultimate home, when you have stored up financial security and climbed the ladder of success to the highest rung you can possibly climb it, and the thrill wears off, and it will wear off, then what? How far do you have to walk down that road before you see where it leads? Surely you understand, it'll never be enough. So you have to ask yourself the question, what matters?
was a young man growing up in New York City, I refused to pledge allegiance to the flag. Of course, I was sent to the principal's office, and he asked me, why don't you want to pledge allegiance? Everybody does. I said, everybody once believed the earth was flat, but that doesn't make it so. I explained that America owed everything it has to other cultures and other nations, and that I would rather pledge allegiance to the earth and everyone on it. Needless to say, it wasn't long before I left school entirely. And I set up a lab in my bedroom. There I began to learn about science and nature. I realized then that the universe is governed by laws and that the human being, along with society itself, was not exempt from these laws. Then came the crash of 1929, which began what we now call the Great Depression. I found it difficult to understand why millions were out of work, homeless, starving, while all the factories were sitting there. The resources were unchanged. It was then that I realized that the rules of the economic game were inherently invalid. Shortly after came World War II, where various nations took turns systematically destroying each other. I later calculated that all the destruction and wasted resources spent on that war could have easily provided for every human need on the planet. Since that time, I have watched humanity set the stage for its own extinction. I have watched as the precious finite resources are perpetually wasted and destroyed in the name of profit and free markets. I have watched the social values of society be reduced into a base artificiality of materialism and mindless consumption. And I have watched as the monetary powers control the political structure of supposedly free societies. I'm 94 years old now, and I'm afraid my disposition is the same as it was 75 years ago. This shit's got to go.